Wow, that was quite an introduction. Um, thank you. Uh, I was going to tell some stories, and I thought maybe I'll share some stuff of like when I was in Zimbabwe or when I did the doozy race, but I thought, ugh, I'm sure you guys are tired of those stories. So I'll save you guys. I won't, I won't tell you those stories today, so it's okay. But um, as Gabe mentioned, my name is Lee. I am on staff here at Life Changes. I oversee the worship and the, the youth here. I am the husband to a beautiful wife, Kelly, um, which is why our gorgeous daughter looks so beautiful. It's mainly Kelly. I d didn't really do much. So uh, mainly, mainly Kelly. It's the eyes. I just gave the Chinese genes. So, but they're amazing. They're amazing. They've changed. Um, well, uh, little Taylor has changed our lives. She's just finding a voice at the moment. It's amazing. We can't really have conversations at our house anymore because Taylor joins in. So we end up just talking to her, but it's incredible. But um, it's wonderful to be with you guys tonight, and I get the privilege of sharing with you. So as we do here at Life Changes, if I could ask all of you just to stand to your feet as we just read some scripture um, as it gets put on the screen for us. Reading from Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. And the next slide, Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our future inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Can we just close our eyes as we just pray? Father, we thank you now that you're so much bigger, so much greater than we can ever imagine. We thank you, God, that you know exactly what is happening. We thank you that your plan from the beginning was always Jesus. We thank you that from the beginning, your purpose and your plan was always Jesus and was always for us to be adopted into your family, Jesus. So we just thank you right now for a plan and a purpose on every life that is in this room, that you're calling us to greater things. I thank you, even as we've just come out of this Holy Spirit series, that your Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing a future inheritance in us. And I thank you that right now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you we say, just fill our hearts, fill this place, so that people will realize what you've called us to be tonight. Ask us in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Cool, you can all take your seats. So, some of you might not know this. I was born in Johannesburg, Gauteng, yes, the place of gold or gangster's paradise, either one. But I was born there, um, grew up there for a couple of years, and um, when I was in high school, I really enjoyed running. Not running from danger, athletics. Maybe confusion because it's Joburg, but not that one. Athletics. For some dumb reason, someone put it in my head, why don't you take up running? I was like, yeah, cool. How many people have ever done athletics in school or in any form ever? Not really like running on the road, but when you're kind of forced to run? You know, like, yeah. I did the 400-meter sprint. Don't ask me why. At the end of it, everything here is cramping, and you're cursing, and you're going like, why did I do this? But anyways, one day, there's a friend of mine that really challenged me. We were running the 100-meter, well, the relay race, and we were starting off in the starting blocks, and uh, we had an A team and a B team. Obviously, I was not as good as uh, Mark Van Pletz in at athletics and that kind of stuff. So I was in the B team, yeah. And we were running against the other schools and the A team. And this guy, my friend from the A team came to me and he said, Lee, have you ever prayed before a race? I was like, no. It's a bit of a weird thing. Why would I pray before a race? I just, it's something I never thought of. And he was like, yeah, I do a couple Hail Marys and stuff. I was like, uh, okay. So obviously he was Catholic. So it was like, okay, that's cool. So then something spoke to me at that moment. And I was like, well, why not? If God wants to be a part of our lives in everything, why not? 
I was like, uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. But it's kind of one of those prayers, you know when it's a prayer that you're kind of praying, but you're not really there. It's, it's like, yeah, okay, God, like, help me with this race. I mean, it's a race, but help me. And gun went off out of the starting blocks, and I ran, didn't take notice of any of the other schools. This friend of mine, I just went for it. Afterwards, I was like, wow, that was good. I felt great. I was like, that was amazing. Our youth pastor at that stage was working at our school as the guidance counselor. He came up to me after the meet, and he said, Lee, what happened in that race? I was like, I get disqualified? Did I trip? Like, what happened? I'm sure I ran okay. And he said, I've never seen you run as fast as I saw you run on that race. And I sat there going, really? I just, I ran normally. I didn't do anything different from what I normally do in running. Only thing different was I prayed. I said, God, bless this race. And in that moment in high school, I realized God wants to be a part of every single part of our lives, even the mundane things that we think are mundane, so that we can glorify His name. And I sat thinking, like, wow, I didn't do anything out of the ordinary except pray. And sometimes I think we, we think except pray is a small thing, but it's a massive thing in the kingdom of God. Like, actually, just that prayer will change lives. Will call people into the kingdom. And it just, it blew my mind when this actually happened. I'll come back to the story at the end, but what I want to share tonight is just three, three statements, um, which is, will come off on the screen now, but we have what it takes because he has what it takes, so we can do what it takes. We have what it takes. I don't know about you guys, but how many people have watched The Lion King? Don't be afraid. Raise your hands. Doesn't matter what form of The Lion King. We've all done it. We have all sung. All been there. So you watch The Lion King. One of the moments that I'm like, actually, I'm pretty sure maybe it's just me. But when Mufasa is on that hill with Simba, and he's like, everything, the light touches. I can't do his voice. It's way too deep. Maybe Mark can, but it's way too deep for me. But he said, everything the light touches is yours. And that moment, like, I'm pretty sure every Christian everywhere is like, yes, Jesus, that's me. I'm Simba. Everything the light touches. Yes, Lord. Your kingdom, that's me. And I think we all go there because we like everything. So actually, when we go like, when God gives us everything, and when people come up to and say, I want to give you everything, all of a sudden, we start noticing. When somebody walks up to us and goes, I want to give you everything I've got, we all of a sudden like, cool, I didn't know you before, but now I want to know you. Like, what do you have? Like, is it a Rolls Royce? Is it a, ma what do you have? Or are you just leaving me with like a job or a business that's really in the ground? And I, maybe it's just me, but I really relate to Simba. I like that guy. He's good. But when we think about this, there's this verse here. In verse 3, where God says, I will give you every spiritual blessing. Now think about the word every. I want everything of God. I want everything of God in every part of my life. So the same way that Mufasa, as silly as that example is, says, everything the light touches is yours. I want that from God. I don't, I don't know. I think you'd be, maybe, take a stretch and going, you're lying if you wouldn't say you want everything of God. I want everything of God. I want everything that He has given me because I need it, to be honest. I need it. There's times when I can't do it. I know we've just come out of the series and Mark mentioned, how do we do this going from highest of highs of celebrating life with people and their birthdays to lowest of lows of now doing a funeral? I need the everything of God so that I'm able to do those things because actually in myself, I can't. I'm not able to. think about this, and, and we were speaking about it today and uh, this morning, and Wayne Nolan a couple weeks ago shared a message on how we can actually affect our country and South Africa, and I really think when we believe that we have everything of God, it means if you need a business strategy to pick up your business and to pick up the company that you're involved in, you have everything in God. 
If you need a conversation on how to get your kids out of the places where they are in of anxiety and depression, you have everything of God. If you need to get the unsaved friends reached, you have everything of God. So actually, we have every spiritual blessing that we need to put strategies in place that draws people to this great God that wants us to have every part of Him. He's already given it to us. But there is a catch. The second part of that scripture says, in Christ. So we can have everything of God, but we can only do it in Christ. We have everything in God, in Christ. The Passion Translation actually says, He sees us wrapped into Christ. So when God looks at us and we've received Christ as our Lord and Savior, He doesn't see Lee, He sees Christ. So He sees us wrapped in Christ. And if I, I came up with this little statement that says, we can have what it takes if we take what he has. So he's given us everything, which includes his spirit, and it includes Jesus. We can have everything of God if we take everything he has given us. We need to receive his spirit. We need to receive Jesus. Then we can have access to the everything that God has for us, because he's poured out his everything. So we have what it takes because he has what it takes. I love that song that we sang, that second song, Champion. Our champion, he fights for us. We, we, we were recently listening to um, a podcast. Gabe sent us a podcast to listen to as a staff. And it was um, Chad Veach. I get that name right because when I was going over this with my wife, I said Chad Leach. I was like, that's definitely not his name. Chad Veach was interviewing a guy by the name of Jeremy Foster. And he said this statement. Chad Veach was saying to him, I've seen you, and you, you're such an encourager. You walk around encouraging people, high-fiving everyone. You're just so happy all the time. How do you do it? And Jeremy Foster made the statement, and he said, my grandfather was never that guy. He was always the guy that was too serious, that was just didn't want to encourage people. That's who he was. My father, in his 20s, decided he did not want to be that guy. So he fought the demons for me so that I wouldn't have to. And I think about that statement when it comes to actually, we have what it takes because he has what it takes. And I'm so grateful for a savior that fought for me so that I could have access to the everything of God. That actually it makes my battles now so much easier because I can wrap myself in Christ so that I can have access to the everything of God. And I don't have to fight so hard because the battle is already won. There's victory in him. I was, when I was preparing for this, there's a verse in, um, in Ephesians, verse 13 and 14, where it actually says, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit as a deposit for a future inheritance. And I was thinking about examples for this, and I thought about when you put a deposit on a house, you're pretty much saying, I want that house, so I'm going to put a deposit down for that house. So the person that is selling that house, if somebody else comes in and goes, actually, I want to move in, I want that house, the seller has to go, sorry, Lee has put a deposit on this house. It's actually his. When I think about it in that sense, the Holy Spirit reminds us when the enemy tries to move into God's territory that actually Jesus Christ has put a deposit down and we belong to him. So we don't belong to anyone else. No one else can move in because the deposit was already put in. That actually the Holy Spirit is that deposit and Jesus has a future inheritance and we actually have it in him. And that just... I kept thinking about this, and I kept like, talking to Kelly about it, and I was like, oh, it blew my mind, just in the fact that I think in our daily lives, I don't know, my, my daily life, there's struggles, there's things where the enemy comes in slowly, but actually, if we continually put ourselves in the presence of God, we remind ourselves of this deposit, that we do not belong to this world, we belong to a Savior, a champion, who has fought every battle, so we have access to the everything of God, he's put the deposit down. I'm no longer anything of this world. I'm His. I just need to wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, come. And it reminds me, Jesus paid. I'm bought. So we can, we have what it takes because He has what it takes. So we can do what it takes. 
I've really been enjoying the Passion Translation, been getting a bit of um, influence out of there when I'm writing songs. I just read the Passion Translation. It's, it just explains things um, in different ways, and I, I really have been enjoying it. And in verse 20 of the Passion Translation, if you can just put that up, it says this, I pray you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. And while I was reading this, I thought about, imagine if you had to walk into somebody's house and there's an empty trophy case sitting there. It would be a little strange. And the questions would be, so what's a trophy case for? Yeah, sorry, not pointing at anyone. But if there was a trophy case in your house, general, if you walk into somebody's house and there was an empty trophy case, it would be a little strange and you'd go, oh, what's supposed to be in there? Why do you have an empty trophy case? It's a little strange. But if the trophy case was full of trophies, the conversation would no longer be about the trophy case, but it would be about the trophies inside. And people would then begin to ask, where did you get those from? What's the story behind that? And that is the same thing when it comes to us and the Holy Spirit. As if we aren't continually filled by the presence of God, the conversation becomes about this trophy case. And it's actually not about the trophy case. It's about the trophy, the great prize that lives inside. And when I start living knowing that He lives inside, as this verse says, I don't need to do anything because my life becomes an advertisement of the power that is at work in me that people begin to come and they see, hey, actually, why do you do business that way? Why do you discipline your kids that way? Why do you love and talk to your wife that way? Because there's a trophy living inside of us, a great prize that people see and notice and actually go, oh, what's the story behind that? And we get to tell a great story of a champion that has overcome so that we could have everything of God. Went through all of this stuff already. <laughs> but my main thing is, when I thought about this, I'm a guy that uh, I, love, I love listening to guys preaching. I love listening to Gabe, Mark, and Tyler, all those guys preaching. A long pause. Um, <laughs> but for me, when I listen to a preach, sometimes I get to the end, I'm like, that's amazing. But how? Like, you just told me all this amazing, but how do I do that? How do I get there? And I thought about how do we do this thing? How do we realize we have what it takes? Because he has what it takes so that we can do what it takes. How do we do this thing? In Ephesians 1 verse 14, in the Passion Translation again, it says this about the Holy Spirit. He is given to us like an engagement ring is given to a bride as the first installment of what's coming. And I think about women that have just been engaged or they've just gotten engaged. And I think about if you look at their Instagram feed or the pictures on their phone or even if you just go to the, the shop with them, everything is pointed out with the left hand just so you can see the ring. It's like, yes, I'll have that over there. Every picture, every sunset, every, everything, Instagram. You've all seen it, and you know it's true. <laughs> when you're newly engaged, it's everything about that ring. But it should be, because they've got this ring that is telling them about a future with a husband that they're going to be living out. And they are so excited and amped about it. And I think about this verse he is given to us like an engagement ring is given to a bride as the installment of what's coming. One of the things that I think, uh, I have tried to process this through some ladies and they're like, no, we don't, but I think they're lying. But when you get newly engaged, one of the first things you do as your ritual now in the morning is you put on the engagement ring. You're not going to leave the house without it because it's the thing that's on your mind. And actually, are we, every morning, engaging the Holy Spirit so that we can go out and do what He needs us to do? 
are we putting on this engagement ring, the Holy Spirit, every morning before we go out? Or are we actually just going in our own strength, in our own ability? My gran, she passed away a couple of years ago, amazing, amazing woman. Um, she was one of those that just prayed and said, God, I want to know your scripture. She never knew how to read or write. And she said, I want to know your scripture. And she started praying, and somebody came to her and said, do you know what you just prayed? She said, no, what? And it's like, you just prayed the scripture. And God was giving her scriptures to pray. She couldn't read or write. Amazing woman. Every morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, she'd wake up, pray for our family by name, and I would hear this prayer coming from her room. Holy Spirit, I invite you into my day. Every morning. That is a woman that was engaged by the Holy Spirit. And I think about us and I think, actually, I need my life to change because I do have business strategies. I do have what it takes to be a good husband. I do have what it takes to be a good uh, father. But actually, I need to engage the Holy Spirit every single day so that I can have what it takes. That's what needs to happen. I need to leave home every single day with that engagement ring, that Holy Spirit, making sure that everyone sees it in every sunset, everything that I point out, everything that I do, people see this engagement ring, the Holy Spirit working through me so that they know who He is. When I was thinking about this and about the Holy Spirit being a deposit, there were two other thoughts that came to my mind of actually like when you deposit, when you put a deposit down, we just had our spring break uh, conference a couple, <laughs> yeah, there we go, <laughs> a couple <laughs> months ago and um, we put a deposit down on some sumo suits and you make sure you do everything to make sure those sumo suits are not damaged, otherwise you don't get your deposit back. I'm sure you guys have worked with those things so you know that. So if we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit, what makes us think that God is going to leave us alone? Because he's put a deposit down. He is going to make sure that we are okay. Because he's coming back for us. So actually, we need to engage the Holy Spirit every single day because Jesus wants to make sure that we're okay. And that's the way that it's going to happen. We can change this world one business deal at a time, one parenting choice at a time, one marriage choice at a time. We can change this world by just engaging the Holy Spirit every morning and going, Holy Spirit, just come. Invade my life. Invade my space. I welcome you in. And the reason we do that is so that we can become the display cabinet for the most amazing trophy in the world that is Jesus. And people begin to see our lives changed and want the answers. When, when I was thinking about this, I thought, uh, I don't really know, I've, I've never, I've been to Gabe's house like maybe twice, so maybe some of you that have been more can tell me. If Gabe had a golfing trophy, I don't know if he has one. Many, many, okay. So <laughs> if Gabe had a golf trophy, in a cabinet at his house, then actually if I, was, if I decided I want to play golf or I want tips on how to play golf, one of the places I'm going to go to is the guy that has a golfing trophy. And I think when it comes to us, this world is crying out for people that are carrying trophies on how to do this life. And actually when we engage the Holy Spirit, we have trophies that people come to us and go, I want to know how you did that because I see the trophy that God has put inside of you. So actually... How do I parent my kids? How do I run my business? How do I love my spouse? Because his trophy inside of us is just beaming through. I just that, that analogy just really stuck with me when I thought about it. And it's okay, I just I want to pray for us in this moment. But actually, maybe even pray for two things. Is one is Actually, if you want to invite the Holy Spirit in right now so that you can have this deposit, you can engage His presence and go out and change this world and do what it takes, then I want to pray for you. And the second thing I want to pray for is maybe the trophy is inside of you, but it's a bit rusty and it needs to be polished. 
and needs to be spent some time with so that people will begin to ask questions again of how do I do that? Is that okay? So if we could just close our eyes and firstly, if there is anyone that wants to invite the Holy Spirit in right now, Mark spoke to us previously in the Holy Spirit series that the best way to receive is just raise your hands to receive the gift that is the Holy Spirit. So if there's anyone here that's going, actually, I need to engage him. I need to invite him in again. Can you just raise your hands just to receive him and more of him in your everyday walk? Father, we just thank you right now for these hands that are raised, that you would invade their spaces. You would invade their lives, that even now as they are sitting in their seats, they begin to feel your presence, feel your warmth, feel everything that you have given them to do what they need to do, God. I pray that even as they wake up tomorrow, their their, their minds will be bursting with ideas, strategies on how to do life, how to do business, how to speak to people, words that they've never heard of before because there is an engagement taking place of your presence inside of them, Jesus. So I thank you for those hands raised, God. And Father, I just thank you right now for every single person that is here, where maybe there are trophies, maybe there are things inside of us that need to be polished, need to be worked on, so your presence shines through again, God, so that we can be, as, as that verse says in verse 20 of Ephesians 1, that we can be the advertisement of the power that is at work in us. Father, I pray right now, reawaken gifts inside of people. Reawaken the things that people can point others towards you because your power is at work in us, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you for all that you are, Father. We thank you that we have what it takes because you have what it takes so we can do what it takes. In your precious name, Jesus.